future of Kevin Durant. Nearly two weeks since he requested a trade from Brooklyn. Miami, one of the teams very much on his wish list as the entire league convenes in Vegas for the NBA Summer League. The Miami Herald's Barry Jackson, who has been covering sports in South Florida for 35 years, tweeted the following yesterday. He tweeted, Heat's general manager, Andy Ellisberg, and Nets general manager, Sean Marks, were seen talking this morning in Vegas per sources. The Heat continue its pursuit of Kevin Durant. Andy and Sean were chatting at their hotel. Heat are determined to exhaust all options to acquire Durant before pursuing anything else significant. So for the second time this morning, I say, the plot thickens. And for the first time, I say, Nick Fidel, catch us up. You're there in Vegas. We know that Miami has been one of the target spots here. Should they be considered right now in the lead as contenders for KD? No, because Greeny, on paper, they don't appear to have what the Nets are looking for right now. But Pat Riley is a wizard. He always seems to find a way. And somebody told me at Thomas and Max Center last night, Pat's 77 years old. He desperately wants one more title before he retires and gets out of the game. And from a basketball standpoint, Greeny, I have long felt that Miami was absolutely the best fit for Kevin because Kevin is that dynamic scorer that Jimmy Butler needs next to him to get the heat over the hump. I've covered Jimmy since he came to the league. He is a fantastic player, but in my opinion, this is a guy who needs that guy who can pour in 30 next to him. We've seen him take teams to the finals. I know people will hear that and say, no, no, Jimmy can do it. But he hasn't been able to do it yet because he hasn't had somebody as dynamic as Kevin next to him. Kevin has a history with Jimmy going back to the Olympics. They played together. Same goes for Kyle Lowry. I think he could hit the ground running in Miami because of that relationship and because the culture with the Heat has been in place and all they're about is winning. So a dozen years after LeBron took his talents to South Beach, could Kevin Durant wind up doing the same? Zach Lowe, how do you like it? I never doubt Pat Riley. There are agents and executives around the league not plugged into these talks per se who just sort of nod and roll their eyes and say, boy, is Durant going to end up in Miami because that's just what happens with Pat Riley when he throws the rings on the table? But it's hard to see a deal that really makes sense for one simple reason. Bam out of bio. Kevin Durant would need to play with Bam Adebayo in Miami for them to have a realistic shot to win the title. The Nets would not do a Miami one-for-one -one trade without Bam Adebayo in the deal. Tyler Hero and three first-round picks and some swaps and some salary, that's not enough to get it done. Bam Adebayo problem number two. He and Ben Simmons can't play together in Brooklyn because of an arcane salary cap rule that we won't even get into. So then you start saying, wait, can we send both Durant and Simmons to Miami and what go, who goes where and Bam goes where? And then your brain starts to break because it just doesn't work for either <laughs> team. If the Heat can pull this off, I would be surprised. I don't doubt them. But to me, if I'm Kevin Durant and I'm the Miami Heat and we're coming together to try to win the championship, Bam Adebayo has got to be on that team. And I'm just not sure I see a pathway to that happening. But again, Pat Riley sees many, many pathways. And if he doesn't see a pathway, he just opens one up. You know, right. chop, chop the bush away with a machete. Yeah, if there isn't a door, he builds one. So we'll see if he's able to do it in South Florida. So, so Chris Canty, let's sort of take a step back and look at this from, you know, 30,000 feet if we can. I listen to you on your radio show all the time talking about this. The fact that Durant finds himself where he finds himself right now in the midst of all of this, whether it winds up being Miami, whether somehow it circles back again to Phoenix, whether, oh my goodness, it, if it winds up being Golden State, what does all of this say to you? Well, first of all, G, think about this. Kevin Durant joining an organization that has championship DNA that was the number one seed in their conference last season. Mm. Stop me if you've heard that story before. <laughs> it's a good point. I mean, Phoenix and Miami were his top two destinations, and yet we find ourselves in this position again. But Kevin Durant's legacy, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, there's going to be a, a, a black mark on it because he is the face of the biggest failure in NBA history. Think about the collection of talent that he himself – spearheaded the charge to assemble in Brooklyn when you had a former MVP in James Harden, when you handpicked your running mate three years ago in free agency in Kyrie Irving. 
and you have one playoff series win to show for it, G. It is an admission of failure, no matter how you slice it. It's a bigger failure than what we saw with my Lakers once upon a time when they had Wilt Chamberlain, Elgin Baylor, and Jerry West. This is a bigger failure than when Charles Barkley joined the Houston Rockets with Clyde Drexler and Hakeem Olajuwon. Uh, there's no way around it. Kevin Durant is the best player, and usually in today's NBA, the best player is a culture setter. That's clear that Kevin Durant is not that dude, and for him to decide he wants out of Brooklyn now, I mean, it's an indictment on his sports character. It, it's an interesting point, and, and I, I'm glad that you made it here. I've heard you say it on the radio, because he's the one person in all of this who has a permanent record. We can say this stuff goes on Kyrie. Kyrie doesn't have a permanent record. He's an excellent player, but he's not going to be talked about 50 years from now. Kevin Durant is. So, Zach, it does sort of make me think, as people talk about, well, he can't do this because it'll hurt his legacy. He can't do that because of what it'll do to his legacy. It kind of feels like the horse is out of the barn on that one. He should just kind of go wherever it is he feels like he'll be happiest because I'm not sure anything that he does at this point salvages the quote-unquote legacy, Zach. What do you think? I totally disagree. First of all, in Brooklyn, you could say that he was supposed to be the culture setter and he wasn't and all that. You know what he was? He was the one of the three stars that always played and always played hard when he was healthy. You could not say that for Kyrie Irving. You could not say that for James Harden. Number two, I do think there is a move if you care about legacy, and I think probably Durant does to some degree, that rehabilitates it if you think it's in need of rehabilitation or repair or polishing or whatever term you want to use. I don't think that would be going to the Warriors team who just won the title, although Durant this time could spin it and say they traded for me I didn't choose them they chose mm -hmm. me I'm not sure how that would go over but I do think there is a world in which he goes somewhere where he can if not build it finish it be the keystone that turns a team that's good into a title team that clearly would not have won it without him. I do think there are possibilities for that, and, and Phoenix and Miami, to me, would both qualify in that, especially Phoenix. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.